impossible. I'm telling you, I, I pray for you guys each week, and I'm believing some of you are going to walk in here one Sunday just with 30 people. And these 30 people aren't going to come in to get saved or encounter God. They would have already been saved on your job, in your home, when you were walking. And they are going to say, man, I met this person, and God was so alive in their heart. God was so alive in their life that I could not say no to Jesus. I'm telling you, the vision and the purpose that God has for your life is greater than anything that you can ever imagine. We're, our, our church, we're a part of a, a organization called the ARC. And the ARC, actually, when we started six, seven weeks ago, was it seven now? It's six, seven, something like that. But when we started, a whole bunch of other churches launched that same week. And there's churches that started a year before us and five years before us and all these different things. And, and as I'm connecting with these pastors, they're saying, man, Stephen, you don't just need to raise up a church and get enough to be comfortable. You need to raise up a church that impacts the community, a church that people are running from relief from the world because they can't get it from the government or they can't get it from the home. They're pushing me and they're encouraging me and they're saying, hey, don't just do normal normal church. Don't just do comfortable suits. Do a place that impacts lives. Places where people can run to and not just get a good word, but their lives can be transformed. And I'm telling you, they're pushing me and they're encouraging me and they're causing my vision to stretch greater than anything that I can ever think or imagine. You guys, I, I'm not supposed to tell you all this, but you want to hear one thing that Destiny Harvest Church is doing? Y'all got to keep it like right here and everybody who's watching on the internet. <laughs> But next month, we're starting this series about thankfulness. And we were sitting in our, in our team meeting. We say, what can we do for the Woodlawn community that would really show them the love of God and that would meet a need? And, and we were just kind of talking. And you may not know this, but we have uh, Bible clubs or mentoring clubs in local high schools. Every week, we're at Milford Mill High School. We're at Woodlawn High School. And we were just talking. And if you know anything about this area, those schools are going through some major struggles right now. And we came up with this idea, why don't we serve as a church all the staff at Woodlawn High School and let them know that we appreciate what they're doing for our kids and how they're pouring into their lives. I went and I actually sat down with the principal about a week and a half ago. And I'm telling you, I walked in there and I told him what we wanted to do and he just stared at me for a second. Then he said, how old are you? <laughs> He said, are you serious? And then he went on to tell me that because of budget cuts, they have not had any appreciation for their teachers in the last three years. These teachers are working, are pouring into their kids. They're being blamed for the bad grades and the bad graduation rates. And no one has said to them, hey, we're thankful. We're excited about what you're doing in this community. So it's Destiny Harvest Church. Come on now. Come on now. In November. We are setting up food, and we're serving the whole staff. We are doing it five-star. We're going to make them feel like they are the most important people around. And I'm telling you, that only happens when you begin to rub up next to people who have a vision that's greater than the two-inch circumference around their life, but they're able to see beyond themselves. They're able to see people around them. Can I just challenge you? I believe that people in this church, this Thanksgiving, you're not just going to buy Thanksgiving dinner for yourself, but God's going to lay somebody on your heart. And you're going to say, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to look beyond myself, and I'm going to see if I can enhance somebody else's life, if I can show them the glory of God, if I can show them the love of God and not just speak the love of God into their life. I'm telling you, if you would just connect with the right people, all of a sudden, your dreams that you had, you'd realize they're too small. They're too insignificant. What God had is for you literally is greater than anything you could ever ask, think, or imagine. Hallelujah. I go to a, a, an um, urban chicken spot uh, around the way. They just have the best chicken. I'm not going to tell you what it is because I don't want to endorse anybody. But if you ever need some chicken, come holler at your boy. But I'll go out there and I'll usually go on my lunch break around 3 o'clock or after one of the schools and I'll stand there. And every time I stand there, there's about five or ten guys standing in front of the chicken spot. And I'll walk in, they'd be like, CDs, DVDs, got what you need. <laughs> I got that new Batman, yo. Dude, that hasn't even come out yet. How did you get that? Let me know, man. I got, I got what you need. And honestly, it breaks my heart 
Because here these are grown men, able-bodied. They're not sick. They're smarter than you and me, some of them. But because they have no vision for their lives, because they haven't realized that God has a plan and a purpose for them, they are literally just sitting and doing absolutely nothing, not knowing the greatness that resides within them. There's people in this church right now where you're just kind of doing what you have to do to make your parents happy or make the people around you happy, not realizing the God that is inside of you, the greatness that God has placed in your heart, and it's because you're around the wrong people. You need to be around people that push you, that encourage you, that encourage you to do all that God has called you to do. I was thinking about something. You know, I... I, I if you, if you read Facebook, there's this kind of trend going around on Facebook right now where everybody's status is complaining about all the haters that they have in their lives. You know what I mean? Now, nobody knows who you are. No one cares who you are. But all of a sudden, you have more haters than Barack Obama. I don't know how that's happened, but I guess you're just that important. And as I was looking at it, something just hit me. The biggest problem in our lives are not our haters, if you even have any. <laughs> Come on now. Because if you have haters, all they do is they spur you on to prove them wrong or, or to ignore them or just to do what you want to do. But what I find is the biggest problem in our lives are the people that are supporting us in not doing anything. The people that are around us, but they're not saying, hey, you should be more like Christ. You should be pushing harder after God. You should be running more for the purpose and the plan that God has for you. Your biggest problem is not your haters. Your biggest problems is your supporters that aren't saying, hey, let's do all that we can do to glorify God with the life that he's given us. We need to be around people that will kick us in the pants and say, get up, get to moving. There's a greater purpose on your life than just kind of sliding your way through. I'm not even going to go there. I remember growing up as a kid and I would just get these talks every time my grades would come out. Stephen, there's so much more in you. There's, there's, you, you you're, you're, you're just kind of making it by. You can just go. And I remember that pushing, and, and I would be so irritated, and I wouldn't want to hear it. And then they say, if you don't push harder, you don't get to play soccer. And I said, okay, 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 okay. I'll run, and I'll push, and I'll. But you need those people in your life that are going to push you into all that God has for you and not hold you back or be satisfied that you're just kind of making it by. One thing that I was thinking, though, the, the reason why it was so difficult for Peter was that these guys that came and influenced his life, they were all but family. I mean, they may not have been brothers or sisters, but these are the people that Peter grew up with. These are the people that, that Peter did life with, that he went to school with, that he worked with. And I'm telling you, it's so easy to throw off the influence on your workplace or, or the influence at school or whatever. But when it comes to family, when it comes to those people that you grew up with, those people that you were connected to, those people that know too much about you, and if they ever open their mouths, they could get you in a lot of trouble. Those people hold a weight of influence in our lives that's greater than just the average person. Pastor Steve, are you telling me that if I'm going to accomplish what I have to do, I have to cut off my wife and cut off my husband and, and cut off my brothers and sisters and just isolate myself? No, I'm not saying that at all. The Bible actually says that God hates divorce, so you can't cut anybody off. But what I am saying is the influence in your life has to change. You see, the Bible says don't cut yourself off. It actually says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm not saying don't associate with people who drink and smoke who aren't Christians. Paul said if you were to do that, you would have to take yourself out of the earth completely. He said, now I will tell you this, don't hang out with Christians who do that. He said, don't hang out with people who call themselves Christians but don't live a holy life. But he said, if they're not a Christian, he said, you go right ahead. How are they going to hear about Jesus? You, you know, if we just say, I'm not going to speak to anybody, I'm just going to hide in the corner. <laughs> You were that heathen before a Christian came up to you, right? So I said, no, I was born saved. <laughs> but it's not that you pull yourself out of that circle or out of that world, but you must change the weight that influence is your life. Does, does that make sense? It means that the way that they speak, that the way that they say, that the advice that you look for, you're not looking to it to kind of what should I do with my life. You're looking for, hey, what does the word of God say? 
What do the people of God say? What's the spirit of God saying in my life? And that's what I'm going to give credit to. And that's what I'm going to give credence to. And that's what I'm going to walk in. And all of a sudden, when that's the weight that you give your life, all of a sudden you're going to see your vision is going to increase. You're going to see your plans are going to increase. And you're going to see the godly effects on your life are going to increase. I'm telling you, I don't care if all your homeboys just treat their wife like dirt. I, I, I heard a pastor say one time, he said, if you ever see a married man open the door for a woman, it's either a new car or a new woman. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> I can say that, though. I'm not married. Ha, ha. But you need to get around some men that treat their wives like she is the greatest queen in the universe. Come on now.